This is the Huion Canvas Pro 27. This is the largest display Huion has ever made, and it has all the bells and whistles to compete with Wacom's biggest Cintiq Pro. How does it stack up? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Brad. I review type for Creative Professionals, and this thing is big. It is so big, it was hard to film myself taking it out of the box or even to film myself drawing on it. But overall, this tablet is really, really good. They've included all the features that they could think of to really compete with Wacom's highest of the high end. There are a couple things missing here and there that like top level pros may miss, but I think for 99% of the illustrators and artists out there, this is gonna really replace oh, them. That's big. So let's start by taking a look at what comes in the box. You have the 27 inch display itself. It's surprisingly light. I shouldn't really call it light. It's not light at all. It's, it's heavy but it's not nearly as heavy as I expected. It's coming in at around 17 pounds. There are some connection ports located along the back. It also has two additional USB type A ports and a headphone jack along the side. There are these nice fold out feet. This sets it up at a nice 20 degree angle. That's a nice drawing angle. Not included here is a stand. In some of Huion's older, larger tablets, they just include a stand there that also allows you to take this and set it up at like a 90 degree angle in case you wanna also use this as your monitor. But what is included here is they have all the mounting holes you need to install like a VESA mount stand along the back. There are all the power cables that you will need to power this thing. Also in that box, are some USB type C cables, an HDMI cable if you want to connect it that way, an extra USB type A cable. There's also this fancy pen holder, more on that in a minute. Also included as a shortcut remote. When I was buying this on their website, I didn't see this included in the things that were going to come with it, so I was pleasantly surprised when I saw it in the box. There's a quick start guide, a cleaning cloth, and a really nice drawing glove. What? Why is why is everybody looking at me like that? Ah, right. If you're looking at a display this big and this expensive, really built for pros, you probably don't need my Learn to Draw in 60 Days course. That's because it is designed to cover the basics of illustrations. It really is meant for beginners, people really starting out in art who want to hit the ground running when they jump over to more advanced tutorials and courses. But if you are in that boat and want a new lesson every day to learn kind of at your own speed, check out bradsartschool.com to learn more. So let's take a look at the display itself. What kind of screen are we dealing with here? Well, this is a full 4K panel. That's 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels. It's got a 60 hertz refresh rate. Overall, it looks really good. I could not fit this on my main desk when I was working this week, so I ended up keeping it on my side desk, which is getting a lot of direct sunlight, yet it it held its own. It didn't get too washed out. They are calling this a studio grade monitor with a 99% sRGB and 98% Adobe RGB, even 97% DCI-P3 coverage. This thing is also calibrated and color tested in the factory before they ship it out. And there's a little piece of paper that comes in the box that shows those test results. The screen has a matte coating on it. It is uh, an improved matte screen this time around. And you can tell it doesn't distort pixels or color as much as some of the older, more coarser matte screen coatings that I've seen. Not that they were bad before. You could just tell that this one is a little bit different. This is also touch enabled. I found the touch to be okay. There, there's also an asterisk by this. It works on Windows. It is not enabled for the Mac. And I'm not too surprised by that. Many of the touch screens that I've seen when they enable them for the Mac, they just are kind of funky. Like you pinch and zoom and it zooms like way too much or way too little. You pan around and it's like zipping all around. The Mac just doesn't work well with touch interface controls. So not including them does kind of make sense, but if you are a Mac user and we're hoping for that, you're not gonna get those features here. Now, Windows on the other hand, multi-touch works really well. I did find some like extra palm rejection things here and there. I wasn't finding many like extra palm marks when I was drawing. That wasn't really a problem, but every so often it would switch layers on me, which is probably more annoying when you're drawing on the wrong layer for too long. But this is where the drawing glove comes in. All right, that's enough. This glove has extra padding along the side, so it is designed to help with palm rejection, and it does. And if you don't want touch on at all, there is a little toggle switch 
by the power switch along the top of the device. All right, let's take a look at the pens and specifically the case that they come in. It's a nice little case. You open it up and there's two pens included. There's a thicker three button pen here and a thinner two button pen included as well. Both of these are customizable in the settings. So if you wanna go in and, and play with the different buttons and what they do, you could totally do that. Both of these also have erasers along the back. The case is also designed to hold the pens when you're not using them. If you're only using one of the pens, you can rest it in the little divot along the top of the case. Case, or if you're using both of the pens, you can like slide it in the little pen slots that's included here for you. Also included here are, are a handful of extra nibs. The black nibs are their standard plastic nibs that have shipped with their pens forever. And then they also have these grayish white nibs um, that are more of a, a marker sort of feel, gives you a slightly rougher edge to it when you're drawing. Another thing they've started doing with their pens is they just include those rougher tips in both of these pens by default. And that kind of makes sense because the matte that screen coating that they're using here is smoother than it has been in the past. I mentioned kind of at the beginning of the video that they have changed that up. And if you use the black plastic tips, they slide around too much, but those like scratchier white gray tips, they give you a little bit more texture to it. They're getting more of the feel from the pen tips than they are from the screen. And this is a trade-off because when you make that coating a little bit glossier, you know, a little less rough, you get better colors. They, they, they just pop a little bit more, um, but you are losing some of that drawing control. Now, as far as the actual drawing experience, the pen is very, very good. Other areas, I think Huion is really doing a great job here. One, this is a 16K pen. This is their new, I think it's their fourth generation pen. By 16K, I'm talking about levels of pressure sensitivity. Now, once you get above 2,000, 4,000 levels, you're probably not gonna notice it too much. Uh, but one area where I did notice it is the initial activation rate is really good. I tried to draw as light as I could. The line still appeared. It still appeared really, really thin. You know, as you apply more pressure, that pressure curve is really smooth. I didn't really have to play around with it or, or goof with it at all to make it feel the way I wanted it to feel. So overall, I, I really did enjoy this pen. I also found that I was getting fantastic, like really fast hatching strokes that gave me a really nice end with no checkerboarding or weird tapering or anything like that. Overall, with the exception of that little bit of wave that you find in this pen, this pen is fantastic. Now, another thing that's worth talking about when we're talking about drawing experience, is just the sheer size of this thing. Uh, 27 inches is enormous. I'm used to drawing on an iPad or an Android tablet a much smaller screen. Now this is luxurious in a lot of ways because you have so much room, even if your windows and, and little like palettes and things like that are, are taking up much of the screen, you're, it doesn't matter because you still have all this room to draw. On. For me, it was just getting used to drawing that big. I wanted to make my lines thinner uh, than they needed to be because they just looked too thick. But when I zoomed out on the image, I was like, no, this is this is the thickness they need to be. And that's just one of those things you have to get used to. I suppose if I was going to use this full time, I would probably just have my drawing window take up half or a smaller portion of the screen and have reference and other things open on the other part of the screen. The shortcut remote, the key dial, they call it, that they've included in here is solid. It gets the job done. It's kind of lightweight. It does have some rubber feet along the back so if you want to rest it along the tablet while you're working you totally can one of the things that was in much of the promotional material was this like little tray that you could attach to the top of this thing so if you want to put your sketchbook there the shortcut remote there maybe just rest the pens on there you could totally do that if you're one of those people who gets mad when one tech company totally copies off another tech company uh, this is something that wacom also included with their 27 inch pro tablet it's pretty much identical, which I thought was kind of funny. But hey, a good idea is a good idea, and it's an extra purchase, but you can pick that up for this device. So all in all, what do I think? I think this is a great device. The The only little thing that I would like to change is just getting rid of some of that pen wave, especially on, on the Mac. But other than that, like when I look at this feature for feature, you know, the 4K screen, the touch, 60 Hertz, maybe you go to 120 Hertz. There's just not a lot of extra things that you can add to this device. I think if I was going to draw with this full time, I would probably get like an ergo arm or something like that for it, a nice stand so I could use this as a monitor or as a drawing tablet. But it's kind of nice that the feet are built in. Uh, you know, that was something that was missing from the Wacom Cintiq Pro 27, is it was just completely unusable without a stand because of the way the back was designed. This thing is 
$2,000. But if you look at the most comparable thing that Wacom is putting out there, it's $3,500. 2000 is still a lot of money, but that's the price of what a similarly sized Wacom tablet would have been, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago. One of the reasons Wacom's prices have been inching up is they've been adding more and more into their tablets that I personally don't necessarily need. One of the big things in their latest versions is this REC, what is it, REC 709 color space. Huion doesn't have that here. So if you're a filmmaker, photographer, and that is something that you need in your reference monitor or your drawing tablet, you're not gonna get it. If you don't know what REC 709 is, don't worry about it. As far as just looking at this display, Personally, I cannot tell. I can't see the color difference between a Wacom and a Huion tablet. But by including some of those higher end color spectrums, that is driving up the price of the Wacom devices. And as an illustrator who doesn't necessarily need that feature or notice that feature all that much, it is nice that Huion is kind of coming up and saying, okay, we're gonna give you 4K, we're gonna give you touch, we're gonna give you all of these high end features in a really big display without you having to pay for some of those other high-end features that you may not need. So yeah, good display if you can afford it. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of